There's a place just a few kilometres westbound from the Brisbane city centre. A laid-back escape from the city noise. A friendly little suburb that offers a sense of charm to its locals. And many visitors just keep coming back. That suburb is The Gap. The Gap is located in the valley between two hills which form part of the Taylor Range. Mount Cuthra in the south and Inogra Hill in the north. This valley, or Gap, is what led to the area's namesake. But many Brisbane residents, including the Gap's own locals, are unfamiliar with their own suburb's historical significance. In this mini-series, we'll cover a lot of the history of Brisbane's quietly spoken suburb and its greater contribution to the Brisbane community. Early settlers used to call it um, Devil's Gap because um, early settlers of Brisbane is that is not the Gap. Um, the Gap was actually a, a sheep station or they run cattle and sheep out here. That was Darby McGrath. But um, this place was close to Bailey's Quarry. Or, uh, so they used to call it Bailey's Gap. We're going out to Bailey's Gap. Over a period of time, it just became the gap. We're going out to the gap. The interesting thing is the distance between the two mountains is exactly the same as the distance in the gap in um, Sydney, which is a bit of interest. I always, I always said, as, as I've written in my book, that um, the name of the place should have been Kinkula. Because Kinkula in the Aboriginal dialect is, uh, or the Aboriginal group, it means um, midst green hills. The Gap was originally a heavily forested area and was inhabited by the Turbal people. The densely forested waterway that ran through the area, later to be named Inogra Creek, ran from the Brisbane River and greatly served the local Turbal people with a vast supply of fresh water and food. The dense scrub yielded a great volume of wild vegetation and fruit, some of which still grow by the creek today. The tracks of the Turbal people formed the basis of many roads in modern-day Brisbane. One of them was a track that led to the area's tallest mountain, Mount Kutha. The Turbal people would regularly visit the mountain to collect honey from the native stingless bees. This honey, which the locals called Kuta, is what led to the mountain's current name. The landscape rapidly changed during the 19th century upon European settlement of the surrounding areas, including what would become the Gap. It should be mentioned that many of the local Turbal inhabitants indeed lost their homes during this time, and the Gap was also found to be a convenient source of timber for the new Brisbane settlement, leading to much deforestation and clearing of the once densely forested area. The original Turbal tracks leading to Mount Kutha were preserved and formed the basis for one of the Gap's main thoroughfares, now called Waterworks Road. European settlers regularly squatted within the area, living off the land and what it could provide. It was not until 1856 when official European land settlements within the Gap were recorded, the first of which was claimed by a Darby McGrath who ran a cattle and sheep station across the valley area. It is not known whether McGrath's land was a crown lease or merely a self-proclaimed possession. There is also much debate over who had the first freehold lease in the Gap. There were three, three land purchases. Three people purchased land on the very first day. Um, paid... Moses Adset, J.F. McDougall. J.F. McDougall owned most of the land over that side, never occupied it. And the patents were the only ones who actually lived on their property in the Gap. Moses Adset owned all of the land uh, from, from Waterworks Road on this side. Uh, he had a tremendous amount of land. The patents are really the, the oldest and most important um, people in the Gap. They did get greatly involved in the area. The, uh, uh, Jess, Jesse Payton was in charge of the, uh, the Municipal Camp Council. I think it was our Ithaca Creek Division. Brisbane was all divided up into all little um, councils. And Jesse was, um, I'm sure, on this side. It's actually one of the patents that also designed original Walton Bridge. Well, it was built by MacDonald, but it, um, it opened on the 30th of, 30th of April, 1900, yeah. They were very active and they, they had, um, I think they were Illawarra uh, cattle. They did try a, um, an orchard down where the, uh, 
site is now where the um, football club is, soccer club. Mm. The first farms happened on the, um, the 14th of September in 1858 at the first land sales and there were just three buyers on that occasion. Uh, in April of the following year they had another six or seven buyers uh, including the three previous ones. So uh, by 1875 the Gap did have uh, 19 families domiciled in the area here and it just existed as dairy farms and pig farms. There were a couple of um, Chinese market gardens, uh, they were quite popular and it wasn't until after World War I that the poultry farming industry came into the area, hence Settlement Road and all that business. Farming became the next major industry for the Gap. Over the next 40 plus years, land ownership of the Gap changed again from the 19 families, with the lands either getting sold off to create new properties or become merged with some of the already existing farms. In 1919, a 413-acre area owned by one of the previous landowners, John Frederick McDougall, became divided into 42 smaller farms. McDougall's plan was to develop a poultry farming industry in the Gap and to provide work for returned service people from the First World War. 41 servicemen and one nurse were to take up residence at McDougall's new poultry farm, known as Soldier's Settlement, and was located at the base of Inogra Hill, where Settlement Road sits today. However, Soldier's Settlement was not as successful as originally anticipated. Within 10 years, many of the former soldiers left the area, either as a result of post-war trauma, or simply had no knowledge of poultry farming, among many other issues. Eggs came in, uh, but within, within 10 years there were only about, well, there was only five I think, or might have been seven, uh, poultry farmers left. The land had no water on, on that, uh, northern side of Settlement Road there was no water, which was a problem. Um, town, water, town water was only to a few houses or a few farms on this side of Waterworks Road. The remaining farmers soon learnt that their source material on poultry farming were for the colder English conditions and had to quickly learn how to readjust their poultry farming to suit the sunny Queensland climate. To assist each other with the new knowledge, these poultry farmers banded together to form the Soldiers Settlement Cooperative Hatchery Association Limited. These farmers and their offspring were instrumental to the next phase of the Gap's development. One of the remaining farmers on Soldiers Settlement was English-born Mark Walter Proctor, whose descendants continue to live in the Gap today and have made many contributions to the area. Mark's son Bill went on to establish a banana plantation in Payne Road until shortly after the end of World War II in 1945, the Gap was a major supplier of fruit, vegetables and meat to the residents of Brisbane Town. A citrus orchard was attempted within the area between Waterworks and Payne Roads in 1890 and a meatworks was established on the corner of Hildra and Waterworks Roads in 1916. Bill Proctor eventually sold off his banana farm in 1952 to the Dillon family, who for many years continued to steadily supply a variety of fruits to be sold at the Roma Street Parklands. In 1939, a jam and preserve factory was established on Pendar Road by Claude Mason, which continued well into the 1990s and was one of the final remnants of the Gap's era as Brisbane's food bowl. Uh, Claude was a Canadian who um Worked on a worked on a, um, a property up in um, Savage Road, Brookfield, uh, where they used to grow pawpaws and fruit and all that sort of stuff. Um, Claude started making um, jams, and uh, he put them on a, in a um, case in front of his bike and at the back of his bike. And uh, in his Canadian accent, jams, jams, he'd come around selling jams. Um, and um, my wife well remembers him when she was a kid and he'd be around Sanford Road at Inogra uh, selling his jams. Um, he set up, he set up um, when he built his home, he married Elizabeth and built, built in Gresham Street at St John's Wood. Uh, about two houses up from where Geraldine Knack lives now and he started making his jams under the house 
my 14-year-old cousin Daphne, who is now about 86 or 87, she was his first employee and she remembers him quite well because the neighbours started complaining about the smells of this jam and Claude put a, Claude put a, um, a, um, a string of barbed wire around the fence and said that would, that would fix it. <laughs> so we still talk about that. Dairy farming continued in the Gap in several areas across the locality including the Lowe family's Parkdale Ballarat Dairy, the Levitt family's Glenbray Farm near Peyton Road. There was also another area to the northwest called Mountfield. Mountfield was originally owned by English immigrant John Hilda and was named after his original birthplace in Sussex, England. The Hilda family farm once accommodated up to 120 head of cattle which were herded across the large area and milked daily to be delivered to vendors the following morning for processing. Mountfield uh, was a 35-acre property uh, bought by John uh, John Hilde, yes, that's true. All the other properties were um, much, much bigger if you, uh, if you read the details. Uh, I think uh, of, of the land sales and the amounts of land they got. Uh, Hilde's was um, uh, quite an interesting place because they really, really roughed it. Um, so that it was virtually a swampy area and if people tried to uh, say they went left a plough or left something on the field it was probably be sunken, sunken and gone by morning. After John Hilda's passing in 1906 his son Henry Hilda continued to manage the property. Mountfield continued on until 1960 when John Hilda's grandson Joe Hilda decided to close down the farm. The area was then sold off and split into two areas. The first, Hilda Road State School, which opened in 1979, one of the Gap's numerous primary schools. The current school oval was originally the afternoon grazing paddock for the cattle of Mountfield Farm. This oval became the venue for the Gap's monthly farmer's market, a callback to its agricultural days. The second is Watonga Park, one of the Gap's most beloved recreational reserves. Watonga is from the original turbo word meaning a reedy place. After the Second World War, the once thriving farmlands of the Gap were once again sold off and subdivided, now into housing estates. Nicknamed Breeders Gap, the Gap was quickly evolving from a farming area into a residential area. Berry's estate, Horton Bridge, was the first place in the gap to go on the market because the back in those days we had what was called the CMO, Citizens Menal Civil Organisation. Uh, that was the forerunner of the Liberals. Uh, they managed the City Hall, Sir John Chandler, for a long, long time. And they had in mind that the gap was to be kept as a green belt to the city of Brisbane. So for many, many years, no development took place in the gap as far as industrial estates were concerned. Um, down on that estate, you've got Romeo Street, which runs in the parallel to Waterworks Road. That is Ronnie, Ollie, Mavis, Eric and Alan. That's the Berry's five children. You have Quirk Street, Mrs. Berry's um, maiden name was Quirk and we have a small street there um, that's called um, Nigel Street and that Nigel Street that's very interesting because Nigel Drury was our member of the House of Representatives in Canberra and Nigel Berry went, went to uh, a lot of effort to get the green belt changed and because he helped the berries so much in getting the land approved for um, sale, they honoured him by calling it Nigel Street. The second estate was the, and that was known as the Ashgrove Park Estate and that actually happened in, um, also in 1956 in August. 
Of course, you'll find the cost of the land and all <laughs> in that, so you'll have to do a bit of research. Of the previous landowners in the Gap, only a few of their names are still seen throughout the area. There's Hilda Road, Mount Bennett, Bennett Road, Peyton Road, Peyton Park, Moses Adset Park, and Payne Road. Descendants of some of these families still reside in the Gap today, while Henry Howard Payne moved on from the Gap and became the founder of two Brisbane institutions, the Royal Brisbane Show and the Milton Fire Brigade. Today, the Gap still thrives as a quiet retreat from the hustle and bustle of Brisbane City, but with a rich and detailed history behind it.